Guys, Michael and Jenny here with Do It Justice, and we're going to take you on a tour of our 1989 Yellowstone Camino Classic. So this is Harvey. Harvey is our Class C RV, and we came to name Harvey just because we started rhyming one day, like Harvey the RV, and it just sort of clicked and stuck. Yeah. And then we, we actually we have this weird thing with dents. We really like dents because it decreases the value of things, so it makes it really cheap for us to <laughs> buy. And so we actually uh, we were saying, oh man, we love dents so much, we should name this thing Dent. And we had already like thought about Harvey, and we we're like Harvey Dent. And I'm a super like, I'm a super oh big nerd. And so yeah, Harvey Dent, Two Face. It's kind of like on the outside, it looks kind of kind of like dringy, but <laughs> on the inside, it's like super nice. So yep. um, yeah, that was kind of a, a kind of a fitting name for it. Come on inside. We got three doggies. Come on. Come on, dogs. Come on, Sammy. So we also live in this rig with three dogs. Yes, three. And no, I don't think we're really cr officially crazy, but <laughs> a lot of people might think we are. So this is our home. Yes. Welcome. First thing you'll probably notice is the floors. We have pallet wood floors. So it is mostly pine. There are There is some redwood. There is some oak in there as well. But it's just kind of cool. It's very rustic. We didn't really know how pallet wood was actually going to hold up. But for driving around for almost two years, <laughs> we're surprised it's not splinters yet. So yeah, sure. like already pre put together pallets yeah. that you find in the like by the dumpster behind yeah. like construction stores, Ace Hardware, that kind of thing. We yeah. saw them all st uh, stacked up, and we had this crazy idea, probably inspired by by a lot of things I've seen on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. People make all sorts of furniture and things like that out of pallets. Yeah, we just thought we could make a floor out of this. Yeah, so we no went... one that we knew had ever done it, but we figured it out. <laughs> yeah, and maybe for good reason. We're seeing some of the uh, issues with like uh, heat temperature differences and the fact that it's not a true floating floor. But honestly, we're just extremely happy with how it's turned out. We made sure to get heat treated pallets so there wasn't there weren't any chemicals or anything used with the actual wood. We actually got access to a local shop, my old high school. The head shop guy is actually uh, two years younger than me. He graduated two years after me. And he was like, yeah, come on out and use all of our equipment. So we got to use a planer, a joiner, and we it was just a really cool learning experience he kind of like showed us all the ropes talked showed us how to do quarter round and everything like that and it was just like everything just kind of kind of came together we did the work got it done and we're extremely happy with how it turned out one of our things when it comes to this rv is we wanted to repurpose as much as we possibly could like just the rv in general is like taking a 1989 rv and then turning it into a home instead of letting it go to the trash we're like really big with not buying new and just buying used and just recycling stuff because it still has a lot of use in it we had more time than money at, at the moment so we basically you know invested a ton of time if you would actually weigh out all the time from when we started to when we finished it's the most expensive floor you can ever buy yeah but sure. uh <laughs> it's it's like a great memory and and we're just super proud of it you know like we said we haven't seen anybody else who's done it in a mobile vehicle and you know we kind of wanted to be the first yeah and how many hours do you think it probably took us total from like picking them you know we had to find the the locations for the pallets ask permission to use them, take them apart. Oh, those are fun days. What do you but think, like, like 80, 80 to 100 hours? Probably. 80 to 100 hours of work, yeah. easy. Um, and mul multiple, multiple days over the course of, you know, a couple months, actually. <laughs> Learn the skills, yeah. I mean, on our next RV, if we ever do it, it's going to be, <laughs> we're going to be a lot better at it. But I mean, like I said, we're super happy with how it's turned out, and we think it looks great. So this is our kitchen. We have a propane four burner stove. We use this a lot. Um, we've never actually used the oven, so we use that for storage and we use the microwave for storage as well. <laughs> but you know, it's a great size for us. We love the double sinks, the stainless steel cleans really easily. And um, these countertops actually are painted on. <laughs> um, it probably sounds really weird. These were like a cream color laminate countertop and we wanted to spruce it up a bit. So actually at Camping World on clearance, we found this countertop paint that's supposed to look like granite and so we figured we'd try it um, it couldn't look worse than th what was already here so we we're actually really happy with how it turned out it has lasted really well I mean for two plus years 
The only thing is it does start to chip, so like you have to be a little bit more delicate with it and you can't let puddles of water sit on it. But if you're looking for like a cheap, easy way to like spruce it up without having to change the countertop or something like that, it is a, a cool option. We did, so like basically this was flower wallpaper. All of these were like this orangey wood color and we repainted everything. My mother-in-law made these awesome curtains that you'll see throughout. Yeah, so we have lots of storage. All these drawers are great storage. We have enough room for my Instant Pot, which is like huge for me. I love that. Cooking in this space is definitely a challenge. As far as, you know, if I'm making like a soup or something like that, just the prep work, it can be kind of challenging. But after the prep work is finished, like it's actually, it doesn't feel any different than a normal kitchen. But to kind of compensate, I do use the table here as like a prep surface sometimes. But yeah, so mostly like my cooking routine, instant pot meals like several times a week, soups and just like all sorts of crazy recipes that I can find on the internet. And so we use that and we plug that into the inverter. And uh, this is all powered by solar. We can cook all of this off grid, live completely comfortably off grid and have all that power supplied by the sun for free. So it's, this is like, an awesome off-grid machine like we've just crafted it like that and I'm so glad we thought about all those things before because there are a lot of mistakes we did make but the power situation is not one of them thankfully so I do cook about every day actually and I make pretty much everything from scratch this is like all of my kitchen utensils and it's perfect that in the instant pot that I said we do eat a hundred percent plant-based whole food plant-based so you'll see lots of fruit and vegetables and I pretty much make everything from scratch like I said yesterday I made homemade hummus it's so good and uh, you know I don't have any problem with cooking you no know, as long as my space is cleared off which we sometimes have to do before we we can actually prep whoa there you go um, <laughs> But yeah, and then this is just like tea, coffee, stuff like that. And these drawers, actually my mother-in-law found at an estate sale and they did not come with, with this, but this is actually a spice or can rack that they sometimes use in normal kitchens. And it would be surrounded by drawers, like in a normal kitchen setup. It actually fit perfectly here and it gave us so much space for dry goods that we, use all the time to cook our meals so this gave us like a ton of storage space plus it's sort of we just like it for decorative you know keeping the beans we think it's it's a nice look as well so something that we learned about these drawers is that they will slide when we drive so an easy solution for that was yeah a tension rod and so this we just wedge in between here and adjust it and now they won't go anywhere so that's an easy solution. Oh, and I cannot talk about cooking without mentioning the Berkey. The Berkey, I mean, just like the peace of mind, it's worth its weight in gold. Like we have found ourselves in some really shady situations water-wise. And this is a water filter, water purification system. So we pour water in the top of it and pure water comes out. So that's, I mean, water is like the basis of all the foods we cook and obviously everyone needs to drink water and things like that. So having this just is, is great. We recommend it. This Berkey is actually a travel Berkey. Um, it's a one and a half gallon size. So down this chamber underneath holds one and a half gallons. This is about $250. But like I said, I mean, clean water is so important and it's the basis of so much. We feel like that was money well spent. And so one way that we fill it up, we have these water jugs. So we just do it like that. And it's it doesn't seem like an inconvenience really at all. So we just get used to it and and we love it. So one other thing I wanted to mention about the Berkey is that this actually, the filtration uh, filters in here last for 6,000 gallons. So when you do the math, it turns out to be about one and a half cents per gallon, which is actually really inexpensive. So it was cheaper than our Brita actually. So that's good to know. And then if you turn around, you will see our dinette here. And this folds down into a bed like a lot of RVs have. Um, but this has 
been, you know, this is our office space and also, like I said, where I do a lot of my prep work and things like that. So as you can see, also with the dinette, I did use the Gianni countertop paint. We, as far as where it holds up the best water is its biggest enemy and also just like any friction so like we if you notice around these edges here um, there is some wearing but we don't keep a tablecloth on this or anything like that and this is how well it's held up so it's not bad but you know we maybe would have thought through some other options if we had known that it would only really last about two years so underneath here we keep extra water the dog's toys and that's about it. One other thing that we did in this area is we completely rebuilt these cushions. And it's kind of funny, a funny story how it actually turned out. So we were measuring this when it was all laid out flat into the bed. We realized it was a perfect twin size bed. And we were, you know, pricing around for upholstery and things like that and the stuffing that goes inside. And it was just astronomical. Um, as soon as they, you know, you went to a craft store or something like that, just like foam is, is ridiculously high price. So we got this idea of buying a twin size foam mattress uh, just from like Walmart or something like that. It's a four inch mattress topper memory foam. And uh, it's funny, we cut it into size like the correct size for each thing using the old cushions as a template using an electric turkey knife so <laughs> it worked really really well but um yeah so these are brand new cushions that we made the other ones were literally disintegrating so we needed some new ones aside from just like recovering the old ones so we love that these are nice and cushy and comfortable we do work remotely and that's really important because we spend a lot of time sitting here working on our computers and things like that so it's it's really awesome that these have held up really well um, also we remade or we my mother-in-law made these pillows for us so we've had a lot of love and a lot of effort go into getting Harvey to look like this and we're really happy with it. So going from the dinette to the front over cab area, uh, speaking of the TLC and love that went into this, it looks really nice now, but I mean this entire front over cab, we actually had to take out most of what was there. Uh, there was only a small amount of framework. I mean, to the point where if you stood on here and put your full weight on there, you'd pretty much go through. So uh, we pretty much had to rebuild all of the base here. Uh, we rebuilt some of the corner back over there and uh, just use a three quarter inch plywood. It's actually a lot lighter than the press board that they previously used because with press board and stuff, they'll use um, glues and adhesives that are just extremely heavy. So this, uh, this is actually lighter than what was originally there. And then before we came out here to the Southwest, we didn't have these wooden uh, storage chests up here, but basically the top comes off just, it's not hinged or anything like that. It's just a completely removable top. And we just uh, did that in the freezing cold when we were up in the Midwest, whipped it up in about three hours, and my parents had this extra, you know, pre-treated wood and stuff like that that actually really matched well with this, uh, which we liked because these kind of by themselves didn't really match the whole aesthetics of the other of the rest of the RV. But once we got these, you know, pine color storage chests in there, it worked out so well. We threw a few pillows in there, got some uh, planters. I call them potters. Jenny gets on me about that. <laughs> and these plants are just awesome. They help freshen the air. We just like the natural feel it gives. It just makes this place a lot more cozy and less industrial in a sense of what they're really for. It's just for storage. Yeah, so this is mainly just, so when it comes to the use of this, that we mainly just use this for just this is all just for aesthetics just to make it look and kind of like tie into the rest of the rig but as far as the actual use we definitely just use it for storage and for the plants it's a really sunny area we don't have any blinds up in the front windows so it gets a lot a lot of sun and then as far as one thing I forgot to mention was we did in Florida we ended up having to take out this entire front window so we did take that off cleaned it up resealed it because as you guys know or will learn most older RVs that have these windows it's made from a lot of really flimsy material and and leaking up there that's why there was all the water damage in the first place so if you do buy an older class C two things to look out for the roof on it make sure if you can buy one that has a pitched roof ours is a flat roof and we never even thought about it when we purchased it we had no idea what we were doing when we purchased it but we've learned a lot just going through this experience so one number one see if you can't get something with a pitched roof and then number two uh, with that over cab window if you can get something that doesn't have that that's ideal but yeah I mean if you do they're pretty easy to take the windows off it's just there's screws on the inside and this it's just a little frame it just pulls right off and then you put some new uh, kind of tar tape type stuff to reseal it and then just put some caulking around it so it's actually really basic when you when it all boils down but 
uh, something well worth doing. So if you guys have one or are looking to buy one, it's definitely something worth doing. So let's jump down here to the little over cab or the driver cab area. Uh, so we got a couple doggies here. But yeah, so as far as everything goes in here, we just kept it all original. We like that it's kind of like the vintage 1980s uh, dash and everything like that. One thing we did do was uh, when we ripped out the carpet to do the flooring we actually ripped out the carpet in the cab area and honestly if we were to go back and do it again uh, we would leave the carpet in the front cab area even though the carpet was kind of nasty we should have just probably done a shampoo or something like that to clean it up and leave it there because one thing we didn't realize is it insulates really well no, number one from noise and number two from the heat this engine runs pretty hot it's a ford 460 engine so the exhaust underneath it gets pretty hot luckily we found some just runner carpets from walmart and we just cut them out to fit where the chairs were and it kind of all worked out and then as you can see we did flip the passenger seat around like you'll find out the rv can't tow the car so we don't we just have this for a dog seat and also if we have guests over I, this is my seat so uh <laughs> but other than that that kind of takes care of that front area so you might have noticed that there is some pvc piping running down from the ceiling or the roof what this is is it's actually holding it's kind of a conduit that we're using to hold the electrical wires coming from the solar panels so up top we do have four 150 watt panels they go from the front vent here uh, all the way to the ac unit back there and it's you know pretty much as wide as it is uh tall so it's a, it's a lot of solar up there the wires come down here through the pvc pipe we just wanted to kind of consolidate them, make them look less noticeable. And then uh, we've got the positive, negative, and ground coming down. And that shoots right down back behind our little entertainment center. <laughs> and it goes right through the floor into our sub bay down below. That has our charge controller in this front su sub bay. And then we have our battery sitting in the second sub bay here. So everything kind of is wired all throughout here. Uh, and it just kind of worked out that way because on the roof of the RV, there was no real place to put the solar in the back. Ideally, we would have wanted to do that, but this RV is obviously not meant to have solar power. We kind of just retrofitted it. Uh, so you kind of just have to work with what you have. So far, it's worked out amazing. And like Jenny was saying, she does cook a lot of Instant Pot meals. So how we have it hooked up is we do have our inverter here. Another thing with the inverter, it didn't come with mounting brackets on it. Again, things that you learn as you just do things. So I had to kind of build this custom box and we painted it so you can actually, I actually had my PS3 up here. I, you know, in this fantasy world, I thought I was going to be playing a lot of video games and having a lot of free time out here, but I honestly, uh, we, we work a lot and we just absolutely love that. So we actually got rid of the PS3 and uh, yeah, so there's the inverter there and you can take it out and uh, you know service it if you need to or uh, clean in there if you need to but yeah so all of our power basically comes from this little power strip right here what i did was i just snipped off the end of a 1875 watt power strip and i just wired it into the opposite side of the inverter and so we've got about 1875 watts which will power a full-on hair dryer honestly it's it's so easy you just plug stuff in this is like our our sole power station when we're dry camping and boondocking so we don't have to fuss with uh, shore power or generator issues like that. It's just a completely separate system that's uh, in and of itself that's accessible and way, power way more powerful than we could ever need. When it comes to the battery bank that's underneath the inverter, we have a 450 amp hour battery bank. They are lead acid batteries, so we only get 225 amp hours of usable energy. But honestly, after being out here in the Southwest, 600 watts and 450 amp hours of batteries is far more than you would ever need. We very rarely get below 90% on our battery bank and it's just phenomenal. We cook all the time. We run our hair dryer, tea kettle, blender, everything off of this thing and it's just awesome. And like I mentioned, we were running pretty high powered appliances off of this. Uh, this is a 2,500 watt inverter. So we can only access 1,875 watts through this uh, surge protector but we can access those built-in AC outlets that are on the inverter as well. So you can bulk charge things while you're you know, running an Instant Pot. We can bulk charge camera batteries or you know, a little trimmer for my beard and hair and stuff like that. And then it also comes with a built-in uh, 12 volt. For some reason, I don't understand why newer RVs don't have 12 volt outlets. 
They are so, so handy for off-grid living. Uh, I will never go <laughs> without a 12 volt outlet. I will, if I build my own, I will wire one in. If we look for an RV, it will have to be a must have or I'll wire one in because these are so handy. Like we said, this is like a, our power station. We can charge USB appliances. We can charge you know, our computer. We actually have a DC charger for our computer. So this is actually nice because it's close to the dinette. But what's cool about the older RV that we have, and we've only seen this on you know, older RVs really, uh, newer ones don't really come with them, but the 12 volt outlets, we have one underneath the dinette. We also have one in the back bedroom. So when we're sitting at the dinette, we actually have this you know, 12 volt MacBook Pro charger bought off Amazon and we Jenny and I both have computers and we just you know swap swap the charger when we need it and it's it saves you so much energy because you're not converting it from DC and the batteries to AC and the inverter back to DC for the laptop so it's a really huge advantage and we love the fact that it was pre-wired with it we did put new outlets we just went to Camping World bought six dollar out 12 volt outlets put new ones in and it's like amazing <laughs> So when it comes to the dinette area, like I mentioned, we do have the charger underneath. So this is our workstation, basically. Uh, everything about the dinette is 100% is original. All we did was take everything off, repaint it. You know, we just repainted this wood part to kind of make it look nice. Underneath here, we have a propane heater. Uh, another thing Jenny had mentioned that my mom helped out with the upholstery and all that stuff to say thank you to my uncle who helped us. He's an HVAC guy. He helped us get this propane heater up and running, which has been super helpful. Uh, even though we're in the Southwest, it still gets, does get a little cold in the winter time. So it still gets down to into the mid thirties at times. And so this thing has been super helpful. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it's great having on the road. So another thing to look for when you're buying an older RV, make sure all your appliances work well. So something we didn't do and it does add up over time. Like I mentioned, if you're gonna be buying an older RV, definitely either get it inspected before you buy one. Jenny and I, the way that we did it is we found it on Craigslist. We drove out to about two hours away from where our hometown in Columbia, Missouri. So we went out to Kansas City and met a really nice older couple. They had already winterized the RV, it was in October and uh, they didn't want to de-winterize the RV. We absolutely had no idea how RVs worked. Uh, he kind of, the guy walked us through everything. He told us all the faults, but I'm sure we couldn't even like understand it or digest it. So we just kind of bought it. It was $4,000 when we first purchased it. So we thought it was a great, great deal. They had originally posted it for, I think 5,500. We just told them, hey, we'll do 4,000, you know, and uh, drove it off. We actually did drive it to a uh, Trans America truck uh truck slash rv repair uh, shop the guy went over it for about uh, 45 minutes he looked it over he said all right everything looks great for your drive home he did not test any of the interior like home home stuff but just as far as the engine and stuff to get us home it was good so all that stuff does add up uh, as far as the repairs and mechanical work and everything like that so if you are thinking about buying an older rv please 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 get it inspected if unless you know what you're talking about if jenny and i were to go out and buy another rv now we'd know everything that's wrong with an rv and what to test but that's only after living it living in it for about two years so unless you're a full timer or are really savvy with rvs the 250 dollars will save you so much headache and so much money in the long run even if you have to walk away from the rv it's just a good peace of mind it seems like a lot up front but even if you're spending it on like a four thousand dollar rv or a hundred thousand dollar rv make sure to do it because number one it's peace of mind number two you can either negotiate the price down and get a better deal on it so you're actually saving yourself money in the long run or number three you can just walk away and just say you don't want it because it's too much hassle would we change anything about how we did it no it's a great learning experience but learn from us and if you're going to buy an older rv definitely get it inspected so now we're just going to jump up here uh, this is our uh, little camera station it's got all of our gear and stuff like that uh, we also have some camera gear and lights sitting underneath the dinette. Uh, there is storage. Uh, one side of the dinette does have the heater. The other side is a storage compartment. So it does have duct work and stuff, but it has a little bit of storage where we have our lights and tripod and stuff like that and some blankets. Right in here, we just have our dry goods, you know, our vinegars and stuff like that. And then we also have our spices and a water pick. Got to keep your teeth clean. So this is our fridge and our freezer. 
Um, it's chock full at the moment of things, but it's actually a great size for us and the freezer as well. We actually make smoothies about every day in the morning and we have lots of like frozen vegetables and stuff like that and we find that is the perfect size for us. And one other thing I wanted to mention, we had thought that this was broken at one point and it turns out it was just the thermostat. So that's one thing, <laughs> the thermostat was broken, the little, um, let me see if I can get it. This little thing, about $5, was broken and uh, we were we were starting to get worried, but we felt like it was cold enough, but it, it was reading 37. But anyway, so just double check that if you think it's broken before you have someone come and repair it or anything like that, just basics, you know? So yeah, and one other thing too about all of these appliances is, uh, you know, with older RVs, there's good and there's bad things. Like every valve in this entire RV, as far as the engine goes, had to be replaced. But the appliances really seem to hold up. Um, maybe they didn't nail down the planned obsolescence time frame just right, but they seem to make everything just really good quality and we, we love that. So that's a perk of, of older RVs for sure. So this can run off of electric or propane. We always, when we're dry camping, run it off of propane, but it is very efficient. I think most of our usage comes from the stovetop and from the heater at night when we need to use that, but I think it could run for months and months and months off of our propane that we have if we were just running the fridge. And with our 16.9 gallon propane tank that's uh, fixed underneath the RV, if we were just running that off of, or using that to run the fridge, it would last for months and months and months. We do make it about two months using the heater as much as we want, the stove as much as we want, and the fridge all the time. So it's pretty sweet setup and no complaints. So back here we have our bathroom. We actually, this had a vanity and a sink and everything. We completely gutted that 100%. And uh, we just decided, you know, when you could reach both sinks with your hands stretched out, it was kind of, it was something we didn't really need. We ripped out the toilet and everything like that and actually installed a composting toilet that has a bunch of storage underneath. So we keep all of like toilet paper and the drying agent that we use for the composting toilet all stays tucked nice in there and then we just actually got this this little storage thing from Walmart and that is everything we need as far as storage goes and we installed these two hooks in there for our towels that was really helpful because when we moved in we didn't really have anywhere to put our towels so we were just like hanging them all over and laying them on beds and the hooks, again, it, sometimes it's the simple things that cost just a few dollars that really change the quality of the living space. And yeah, so we repainted everything, again, just like aesthetics, and then we have little medicine cabinet kind of thing up here. So it's just everything that we need. So it's kind of funny, but for our drying agent, we actually use pet bedding that you would use for like a hamster or a gerbil. It's really cheap. It comes in like this huge brick and it's about $6 and it probably lasts us about five months. So you can't beat that. And uh, so it's kind of funny, but when we check out at, at Walmart or wherever we are, if they knew what we were using it for, it'd be really funny. But yeah, so that's what we use and we, we keep it all in there. So yeah, let's move on to the shower our shower it's a stand-up shower it was really important to me when we were looking at RVs to have the shower and the toilet separated just a mental thing for me but I just wanted them separate so this actually had a glass door that would swing out and take up the entire hallway so we actually just took that out and put like a regular shower curtain and what's really cool about it too is that we can just fix it up like that when we you know it just gives you elbow space and it just feels more open and roomy in here and then we also keep the dog's water in here so when they you know drink and splash and stuff like that it's not going on the floor and um this actually is kind of funny but sometimes we stand in this brown bucket here when we take a shower because it saves us um, space in our gray water tank. So we don't have to fill that up. We use all biodegradable soaps and uh, actually we use vinegar for conditioner for our hair. So it's like all things that can just go outside and uh, not harm the environment or anything like that. So that that's one like little hack. It's not glamorous by any means, but it works. So yeah, that's our shower. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention too is that um, 
there were these accordion style dividers here and they smelled really weird and were brittle because they were like some sort of plastic so we actually installed these dowel rods here and then these curtains we got we found these at a yard sale for two dollars for both of them and I had actually we had been using these in our house before we moved into this and it matches perfectly with the paint and we did not plan that so we were really excited about that but this is just like a you know easy solution for us you can have privacy when you're in the bathroom because we do have one on each side so those are kind of our, our bathroom doors sweet now we're going to go ahead and head into the bedroom so we did somehow fit our queen size bed in here this is only designed for a full size uh, but we were able to kind of just squeeze this thing in here and kind of utilize our previous bed that we had in our old apartment so another thing we did was we used the granite countertop paint to paint these two little countertops nightstand type things so everything looks great we just we have a down comforter super important uh, when you're out dry camping and living off grid in an RV, down comforters are hands down something to have. So keep that in mind. As far as the aesthetics in here, we actually had to rebuild this, build this entire back wall. So we had an enormous amount of water damage back here on the driver's side of the bedroom. And again, I have to thank my dad. He, he came in and helped us. We spliced in wood and we actually used recycled wood from Home Depot to reframe the back part here, which was really awesome, saved money on that. Really the only cost back here was just a little bit in material and just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears sometimes. So yeah, it was it was just really good. We're really happy with how it turns out. And you almost, <laughs> when you look at the videos on our channel, I mean, it's almost hard to look at this and believe that it was gutted to the, to the basically to the vinyl that's on the outside. So, and, you know, we look at it and we, we just, it's such great memories and just it's good knowing that you know we did it and uh without knowing how to do anything really so it's kind of cool so one of the reasons you'll realize these older rvs are so cheap is because oftentimes they have water damage which is kind of a double-edged sword in its own way number one when you see water damage, we could notice the water damage. There was, you know, some soft spots. There was actually a place where it had started to kind of break through in the ceiling. What we didn't realize was how much work it was actually going to be. So a lot of times surface water damage can really be pervasive, a, a lot more pervasive than you actually think. Uh, and not having experience with it, we just kind of bought it thinking, oh, we can, you know, we can just gut this out real quick, put a little, a new little square up there. I mean, it turned out being like going down to the wires and, and seriously like, marrying boards in there and try to, try, trying to create something that's sturdy enough to actually like hold your weight while you're walking up on the roof of the RV if you need to do, do anything up there. So uh, like I said, it's a double-edged sword. You do get negotiating power when it comes to buying older RVs, but also beware that it's a lot more work than you already think. <laughs> Even if you're thinking it's a lot of work, it's more, trust me. Definitely keep that in mind when you're buying an older RV. A few other things I wanna mention back here, we do have storage underneath the bed. So our, our water tank actually, fresh water tank sits underneath the bed. It is a 50 gallon fresh water tank which is actually surprising for an older RV I think it's probably because of the size but if you're looking to do any boondocking or camping out there we are very conservative with our water and we still have we have 10 extra gallons that we do hold we're about to buy two more so we can have 20 extra gallons and that will last us generally about mm, maybe a little under two weeks sometimes a little over two weeks depending on how we use it and that's not showering every day showering every other day maybe every three days, but you realize you don't have to do it that often when you're out here. So uh, one of the things about this RV too, was it was uh, top of the line back in 1989. I don't know how much that's actually saying, but it was, it has full wood cabinetry. So it's actually really nice. It doesn't have the little laminate stuff that's over the press board. So it's actually like legitimate wood. And so all we had to do really was just um, do new hinges and new handles. So it's just new hardware. We wanted to kind of be brushed nickel. It's definitely more modern looking. We do have a mirror back here that used to be in the bathroom. Uh, so we have kind of like a place to kind of get ready and, and see ourselves and then all up there is my clothes are in that in that bin right there jenny's clothes are kind of in these two right here and then we also have trx bands for working out so i actually work out off the back of the rv i, I hang these off of the ladder rack it's a great way to work out do mobile work uh, workout they're kind of expensive but honestly they're so worth it if you uh if you don't want to pay for like a gym membership or anything like that so yeah, we do have the closet storage back here as well. Not a whole lot, so that's the one thing about this RV. It's like it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, closet space. So we, have to, we had to kind of limit um, what we actually hung up. We actually, I'll show you how we store our clothes. So we fold them kind of really compact and we put them in these plastic containers just because 
for some reason in this older RV, we realize that there's like sediment and stuff like that that will get all over things. Dust, um, all, oftentimes we have dogs, which it's hard to kind of like keep things hair free and dust free. So we just got these storage bins and it really works out well. So great. All right, now we're gonna go to the outside. I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the stuff I did outside and I will see you out there. Sweet, all right, we're here at the RV, at the outside of it, Econoline E350. So the brand of the RV is actually Yellowstone, but it's a Ford chassis. It does have a Ford 460 in it. It's a V8 engine in it. It's a big hoss of an engine, 7.5 liter. And it gets on average, since we've been traveling for the last couple years, uh, up the mountains and down, on average, it gets about seven miles to the gallon. So it's not great, but eat, no matter how much weight you put on this thing, that engine pretty much gets the same gas mileage no matter what. So just a pretty trusty engine. It's got a three gear transmission mission in it so at about 55 miles an hour it's it's slowing down so that's the one thing about older rvs but the cool thing is is it it is just you know straight mechanical stuff there's not a whole lot of uh, computer stuff in it so we've taken it to mechanics and they've actually actually really loved it for that fact now i do have to mention we bought this for four thousand but we've also put in about north of six thousand dollars in mechanical work on it as we've been traveling some of it was kind of like spiraling issues that happened just from like fuel pump issue that was underneath uh, so our catalytic converter went out because the engine was running hot I could go into lots of details on that but you probably don't I don't want to bore you with that so but we did do a lot of mechanical work but another thing we did we got new hubcaps for the RV it makes it look so much better put new shoes on your RV it makes it look way better we did get seven brand new tires so six on the RV and then we do have a spare in the back so we got Cooper HT3 tires and they are light truck tires I think they're G-rated and they basically they cost us about a thousand bucks so that's one thing about this RV is like kind of the surrounding cost factors, they're very low. So getting a brand new set of tires is only about a thousand bucks, which is great for us, an RV that can travel around and do that. So we're gonna move in here. In here we just have our little levelers. So that just those little stacking levelers, that's a kind of a, a cool thing to have. We have two sets of it because we sometimes find ourselves in really, uh, kind of slanted areas and with the refrigerator you need to make sure that the RV is level so with those propane uh, uh, off-grid refrigerators they definitely need to be level uh, when you're using them. In here we've got this is the uh, kind of like our gas oil uh, all of our like auto stuff if we want to do oil changes and stuff like that in here we do have kind of outdoors type stuff we have uh, waterproof uh, containers we also have a dog dog gate and just kind of some extra stuff like extra chairs and stools and stuff that we use if we ever sit around a campfire. One thing I wanted to mention was this is a new city water hookup. It's kind of a funny story. We were at a campground doing a, a video job for somebody in uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I did have to drill into the RV. The old uh, city water hookup that we had was completely, the valve on it broke. Like, like Jenny had mentioned, we replaced almost every single valve. So I had to actually just drill into the side of that. And luckily, one of the only spare parts that we had at the time was we bought this on clearance for like a buck 25 at, at Camping World. We had no idea what it was when we bought it. We just bought it. And then sure enough, we just I just had to make the hole bigger, put it in there. But one of the cool things about doing DIY stuff in an RV, you don't ask yourself if you can do it. You ask yourself how fast you can get it done. So anything that I can do, I just like jump right in, get it done. A few hours later, that thing was all in there and we were back on the road doing our thing. So down here we have our LPG. Like Jenny had mentioned, we do have a 16.9 gallon cylinder tank that's underneath there. We put about $700 of work into that, uh, mainly because we paid labor for Camping World. So if you can do it yourself, it saves you a lot of money. But with propane stuff, we tend to leave that to the experts just because it's something I don't know a whole lot about. But in here we have our gray water tank. Uh, so that's about a 30, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, about a 30 gallon gray water tank. I actually had to rebuild the gray water drain. We had an issue where we were almost about to fall off the side of a mesa. Long story for that one. But uh, basically the, the drain pipe that goes underneath the RV completely got sheared off. So I had to just go to Home Depot, customize this, uh, this new fitting. And so now we have a new kind of gray water drain that is not connected to the black water tank. So it's kind of unfortunate that we can't utilize the black water tank because we do have the composting toilet, but it, it works out for what it is and, and we're happy with it. In here, we just have our hose. We have our um, stuff for all of our water fill up stuff. And uh, we do have a little uh, extra filter that we put onto the uh, spout when we do fill our tank. Uh, there's our fill tank. That's a long story too. Uh, <laughs> I accidentally drove, drove off with the RV, still plugged into shore power, and 
RV life, that's all I can say. Uh, you'll find yourself learning all these things, but I couldn't find a replacement door, so I had to just kind of duct tape it and work with what we have. I know it doesn't look great, but it's kind of a burglary deterrent if you think about it. Another thing I wanted to mention while we're over here, uh, you'll notice we do have it caulked. Basically, every single steel that's on the outside, we have recaulked this RV. It's not the greatest looking thing in the world, but for the last three years, it has not had a leak. And that was our main goal with it. So we're all about functionality instead of looks. And uh, we didn't know what we were doing with caulking. Thank you to, thanks to some of our subscribers. They've gave, given us a lot of tips and tricks on how to actually do it the right way. So if we ever do this again in the future, we'll definitely know how to do it. But again, it's not leaked, so we absolutely love that. This RV did come with awnings that went over this uh, bedroom window here, which we actually did take this bedroom window out as well and resealed it. That's where that uh, all that water damage was with the back bedroom. So we did have to take that window out uh, along with that front over cab window. So those were two windows we took out. And again, it's a lot easier than you think it is. It's just taking it out, you know, resealing it, you know, re-putting seal, uh, sealant tape and then just smashing it back together and it'll be good to go. So we did have those two awnings on there, but we decided to take them off. It was older, it was rusted out, and we just decided we just didn't want to have to deal with it. So we just put some kind of roofing sealant uh, in the holes where the actual awning was, and they've held up so far. So we just didn't want to have uh, more stuff that would actually break. In the back here, we do have a 4,000 watt generator. Uh, we've actually never used the generator. It did come with an exhaust underneath, but again, older RV, that exhaust was ended up dragging on the highway. And yeah, we ended up throwing it away in a Taco Bell dumpster in Kentucky. So we don't have an exhaust for that generator anymore, but we've never had to use it with the solar that we have on board. So we do have that, I guess, worst case scenario, we do have some sort of uh, energy uh, form. Another thing I wanted to mention is because this does have a back bedroom, this RV actually sits on a 22 foot chassis. There is a six foot extension on the back where that is our bedroom. And so this has a 2,000 pound tow limit on that extension. So we actually can't tow our car. Um, Jenny drives behind and it is kind of a time, we only move the RV about once every couple of weeks. So it's kind of a, a nice time that we can get our own, own space, even though most of the time we're calling each other or like brainstorming with walkie talkies and things like that. But she gets about 50 miles to a gallon uh, streaming behind this thing. So it's a huge wind protector and she gets great gas mileage in the Civic. So when we first started out RV trip, we went up to the Northeast and we actually didn't have a, a tow car or car, an extra car to drive around. We actually had a, a moped hitch on the back of this and we just had a little uh, 50 cc scooter uh, that we put on there. And so we had that scooter, we used it about twice the entire time we were up there and it just wasn't handy at all. It added a lot of extra weight into the back of the RV and not having this was so hard, at least for us. And when we're trying to like create a mobile income, uh, moving this RV is just not as easy as you would think. Even though I can drive it around in a parking lot now, uh, just getting in and out of places, it's just not practical. So we, we drove back down to Missouri, picked up our car that my parents were watching, and Jenny's been driving behind me ever since, and it's been working out perfect. So if you can't tow the car, even if you can't tow it, we would highly recommend having a tow car if you do it full time, because it comes in way more handy than you could possibly think. This thing is expensive to move. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. And if you want to learn more or check us out, we do have a YouTube channel. It's called Duet Justice. And that is uh, D-U-E-T, like duet, like a... Violin duet. Yeah. And uh, Justice <laughs> is our last name, so that's spelled kind of different too. It's J-U-S-T-U-S. -S. And uh, we'd love to have you stop on by and check us out. Yeah, the links will be in the video description below. So uh, definitely stop by, check us out. And uh, thanks so much for taking the tour of our tiny home on wheels. Mm -hmm.